Hello, I'm Greg, and welcome to Midnight Oil Software, where I talk about Unity game development. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about hoverboard physics, and today is a special episode because I actually have a guest on my show, uh, my friend Manny. Uh, I had the great privilege of being in a mastermind group with Manny. This group was formed out of Jason Wyman's Game Dev Conference last year, and there's five of us in the group from all over the world. Uh, Manny is joining us all the way from the United Arab Emirates. I'm in the Raleigh area of North Carolina. We have another member who's in the Charlotte area of North Carolina, a fellow who's been joining us from Poland, and another one who's been joining us from Germany. And we've been meeting weekly about a year now, haven't we, Manny? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we uh, get together and discuss uh, game development. We share the things that we're working on. We help each other with issues, uh, share things that we've learned. And it's been a really good experience for me. And you'll even see how that is borne out by the contents of this video. Um, as I mentioned, the subject of this video is hoverboard physics. And one of my viewers actually requested that I do a tutorial on hoverboard physics. And I'd never really done anything uh, related to hoverboard physics. So I gave it a initial uh, try, if you will. I put together a quick project, um, put together some terrain, uh, imported a, um, I think it was actually a um, unicycle type board. Um, and I just took the, I took it into Blender and removed the uh, wheel <laughs> to kind of make it into a hoverboard. And I played around a little bit with the basic physics and I ran into some issues very quickly. And as I thought about how I would fix those issues, it occurred to me that these things were very closely related to things that Manny had been addressing in a tutorial series he did on walk animation using inverse kinematics, uh, specifically ray casting to get the normals of the terrain. And I'll let him explain that to you, but I reached out to Manny to see if he'd be interested in taking on this project and playing around with what I had started and Manny enthusiastically grabbed the bull by the horns and with a lot of trial and error has actually, I think, come up with a pretty cool uh, solution to this. So Manny, why don't you introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about yourself and what you do, and then we can get to uh, the actual hoverboard stuff. Thanks, Greg. So, oh, hello world. I'm Manny and I love solving problems. That's my thing. I'm mainly a 2D guy, so when Greg gave me this 3D assignment, it really cost me a lot of sleep, but, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I couldn't let this go, and I just had to dig into it. Now, uh, there's not much to say about this, so I'll let Greg tell us exactly what he did in the beginning, and then I'll take over from there. Okay. Uh, so actually, all I did in the beginning, after I set up the initial project, is I went into chat <clears throat> GPT, and I said, write a script uh, to make a hoverboard float, basically. I can't remember the exact prompt I used, but it gave me a basic script that applied some vertical force to a object with a rigid body. Um, and it had a little bit of dampening uh, applied to it as well. And this worked great until I started adding movement. Uh, one of the things I ran into, I had some undulating terrain. And if I hit the terrain too fast, uh, the collisions wouldn't work correctly and it would actually go through the terrain and fall out the bottom. And if I went over like a slope and I got some air, uh, when I came down and hit the uh, ground again, I would fall through the bottom of the, of the terrain. Uh, so I handed this problem off to Manny and he basically picked up what I had started and fleshed it out. And I'll, I'll let Manny give you the details of how he did that. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so there was a couple of things going on here. Firstly, we had a bit of a collider problem. So if your mesh sticks through your collider or the amount of collider that's under the mesh is too low and you hit the ground at a high velocity, you would go through. That's pretty easy to fix. You just bump up your collider a little bit. But the main problem was that as something like a hoverboard would approach an obstacle, you would have your ray cast coming down from the center here. And the hoverboard would reach the obstacle before the ray cast detects a change in terrain. So the first thing I did to solve that was to actually advance my terrain detection. So where 
where Greg was doing a cast, I started to cast from a point that was actually above and in front of my board. Now, to, to get that right, I experimented a bit and I did some stuff where I had points in front of the board and behind and left and right to the board, casting from there. But it was always just a little bit fiddly because you would cast from different points and get the average height. And what I settled on was actually calculating the ray cast point by taking a point above the board and then using the velocity of the board to calculate an advance and multiplying that by a certain ratio. So what you would get is this point that's above the board. And as you're moving, even if you are moving sideways, the point will be here. So whatever you're going to hit next is going to count as a ray cast hit and then do the calculation of the force and the desired height from this point to react in advance. I'll show you how this works. And if you look at a lot of hovercraft videos that, or hoverboard videos that people have tried to make these, you'd notice that many of them actually only work on straight and level terrain. Another part of this problem is that because of the way unity physics works, if you just apply a force up and it's working against the gravity force, you get these wild spins on your board. I don't know if you had that in the beginning, Greg, if you notice that. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when this came to me, you'd actually frozen your rotation except for the x-axis. Yep. And if I unfreeze, the board would just go nuts. Yep. So this was another part of the problem because now you're cresting a hill and instead of doing this, you are now doing this which le looks weird and it just doesn't feel nice when you play it. So I'm going to show you on my screen what the current state of this is and I'll talk a bit about it. Right. Now, let me explain something. Currently our hoverboards on top of a huge plateau that I put on to test an edge case, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. And then you'll notice this top view, I've got a little script that tracks my hoverboard in the scene view. And this little widget here, or this little gizmo, is the cast point. Let's just get that straight from above. Now notice, as I, as I start moving forward, the cast point, oh, don't want to go over the edge yet. The cast point basically advances in the direction of my velocity to catch any objects that are going to be in my path. And let's just drop this. Hey, we're on the ground. Let's find some dunes to go over. I'll show you. There is a balance in tuning here which you'll see, I'll make a video to explain a bit more about exactly how this works, but you have to find your balance when you tune this, because if you're too close to the ground, you have to advance your, your ray casting more to give you a chance to get up. And you also have to move your point for your attitude adjustment, because the attitude adjustment also gets done by ray cast. I actually conform to the terrain by checking for the normal of the terrain directly under the hoverboard. Now, for those of us who don't know, like I didn't know in the beginning, the normal is basically a line that goes 90 degree up from your surface. So if the surface is like this, this would be your normal. If it's flat, it's like this. And I wrote some code that would try to orient the board according to the normal, which also allowed me then to take off that freeze on the rotation that you have. Furthermore, I was thinking about how, an, how a hoverboard would handle. Now, if you think about this, if you're riding a skateboard or a snowboard, there's an element of, how should I put this, lateral friction. So your skateboard's not going to just keep going this way. So you actually need a way to, to limit the slide on this. Now, if you look at the hoverboard from above, 
pick up some speed here. And as you turn, you see there's a significant amount of, of slip there, which you wouldn't get with something that has wheels. To help mitigate this, I actually modified the controls a bit so you can control on a separate axis, your lean angles and your forward and backward lean. This also gives you a little burst of speed, but again, notice the ground collision, leans too much or the hover's too low. So you need to tune for what you want there. This gives us some really cool opportunities because now you can actually take this. I've set up a little slalom course here. Uh, ah, there's the slalom course. Okay, so let's just set this up in line. I hope I don't crash. Now you can, instead of turning, you can actually lean it through or if you turn and you need to count you can lean in so yeah this was my thinking behind this there's still some shortcomings on this for instance if you start turning and you lift off the angular momentum keeps going now this could be desirable but it also makes it very hard to steer your board so what we want, might want to do in future is to say when our input ends, just apply a little counter force to stop it rotating. And since we are working with a mysterious magical anti-gravity force that keeps our board in the air, we might as well use that to stop our rotation. Okay. Little value that I put in. Stay with. Right. Now would you like to see some code on this or? Yeah, you want you give us a quick overview of the code and I will put a link to the GitHub repository in the description of the video. So if you want to grab it and play with it, you all are welcome to do that. But uh, I think Manny, you said you're going to do a more detailed in-depth discussion of the code in a separate video that'll be on your channel. Um, yeah. So I'll also be posting a link to Manny's channel in the description of the video. And uh, while you're there, you can check out his series on uh, the walk animation with the inverse kinematics. I think that you'd all really get a lot out of that. Cool. All right. I'm just going to give a quick run through of the code. Now, basically, I've got three functions here. I've got the stuff that happens in the fixed update, which is responsible for hovering the board. A lot of this code originally came from you. And then I've got the attitude adjust. This is where I try to confer, conform to the normal of the land. And then here I have set lean angles, which just takes input from the old input system and just sets angles for the lean left and right. And then eventually when I get to attitude adjust in my fixed update, it adds those angles to your rotation before calculating the rotation and actually rotating the board. Now the main, the main trick here, if you look at this, this is our raycast advance. This is what I talked about. This is a normal vector three, which you just calculate by taking the body transform dot up and multiplying that by the ray cast height above board. So that's a variable that I put in to determine how high above the board we want to be. And then just adding the rigid body velocity times the velocity look ahead. Uh, you can make this bigger or smaller to just make that look ahead a little smaller or bigger. The reason why we cast from above, let's say you, you get close to a hill and your hill's here and your point where you're casting from is here. Now the board's not here yet, so it hasn't moved up. So what you're going to do is push this point through your hill and now you're not getting any ray cast hits. Board won't adjust and you're going to crash. So that's the reason for this. The rest of this is just taking a ray cast going straight down from that point, and you take the difference in height, 
and you basically subtract your height that you want from it and you add a force correspondingly. Won't go into too much detail now because like you said, I'll explain it later. And then right here, this is the code that you wrote to dampen the velocity as well. This is quite important because if you don't have this, the board just keeps bouncing all the time. That's about all I'm going to, to give you in this. Are there any specific questions that you'd like to ask? Um, I don't have any specific questions, but uh, if any of the viewers have questions, um, basically I'm going to put a link to my Discord server as well in the description of the video, and that's the best place to ask questions. You can post questions on this video uh, if you want, but we can give more detailed answers on Discord, and we could even include screenshots and things there that we can't really include in a comment on a YouTube video. So um, is there anything else you'd like to say to wrap up, Manny, before we, we wrap up this video? I'll just say that this has been a lot of fun. And it's been a learning school for me coming from 2D going to 3D. It's really, it's a little different. But yeah, I, I'm looking forward to explaining this in more detail in a video and answering some questions on Discord. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you, I'm really impressed with what you came up with. Um, your solution was really, I think, fun. I think that people can take this and integrate it into their games and it'd be very helpful to them. So thanks for taking this on and, and putting so much effort into it. Thanks for bringing me on. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. It really does help me to grow my channel. And if you have any questions, like I said, I'll put a link to the Discord server uh, in the description of the video. So just hop on there and uh, post any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and good luck on your game development journey.